Okay, uh, in this video I'm going to do um, basically a little overview of Gottlob Frege's article called The Thought, which was published in 1918, and um, that's part of many, many anthologies, one of which is this mammoth one, so you can see it's huge, Readings, readings in the Philosophy of Language, um, edited by Ludlow, the, this book has a lot of amazing things in the philosophy of the language in it, including the thought, of course, along with um, Frege's um, Sinn und Bedeutung, or Sense and, and Reference. Um, <clears throat> another good book that this is in is the Frege Reader, has those two articles, the thought, Sense, sense and Reference, on concept, concept and Object, and a lot of letters to Edmund Husserl, which is cool. Um, I need to own this book, but this one is a is a library book. But I should I should definitely pick, pick that one up. Anyway, um, marker here. Um, going on to the article. Now, um, the whole thing here um, it's called the thought and logical inquiry, or der Gedanke. And uh, the whole thing here is, it has to do with philosophy of language about what thought is, of course. Um, now I'll get to actually why this is philosophy of language, because it might not be entirely apparent as you're reading this as to how this relates to philosophy of language. Um, it's a lot of philosophy, philosophy of mind, I guess, too. Um, but, uh, well... Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll just I'll, I'll, I'll just go through your, I'll just go through the article and then I'll try to tie things in um, afterwards. Um, so he starts out trying to know what truth is. Um, he asks what it means for a, for a proposition or a, st or a sentence to be true. Now I have this these two things. These are elements of Freya's conceptual no notation. Now this one just the line in a this is basically what a thought is. Um, this is content in itself. Um, you know, let's say we're thinking that um, elephants are pink. That's just the thought of pink, pink elephants. Now, the assertion is pretty much laying out the thought as true, or the uh, the uh, judgment is is laying out as true. This line is just a thought, while this one here, with the vertical line, almost looking like a drive a, a drivability sign in in logic. Um, let me get my other book here. I kind of show you what his. This is Frege's the Griff shift, the Griff shift. And stuff like this that I, you know, I'm kind of trying to, trying to, I'm trying to, to come to a point as to where I can do some videos going into this pretty soon here. Um, at least I'll try. Because it's kind of complicated stuff. But this is pretty simple. At least these two things are. It does get more, way more complicated, kind of like what I showed you in, in that book by him. So, this one without the, without the line. when Because when you put this on there, that makes it... That 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 makes it a ju a judgment, which means you are laying out the thought as true. So this would mean, pink, the fact that pi the fact that pink the fact that elements are pink, is true. Um, so. What is truth? He's trying to talk about what tr a true statement is. Now we're not we're not we're not we're not we're not talking about truth of, objects, or ex or extensionality. But we're talking about truth of pictures or or ideas. So he talks about correspondence. Now, what is what is correspondence? It's the the very famous correspondence theory, theory of truth, um, where we have um, where we 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 talk, we talk about truth as to how um, something is true is that a statement. 
is true if it corresponds to certain to to certain states of affairs inside of inside of reality. Now that's a bad way of saying it, but there's lots and lots of literature on this. Um, but truth, according to Frege, is not a relation; it is an adjective. Um, you can say a st a statement is true. It's you are you are you are describing it when you when you put this little vertical line on something, you are describing it. Um, now, he doesn't like correspondence, and the reason is that you, let's say you have A and you want to have the truth of it, you go to B, because it, and these are two ideas, um, that A corresponds to, to the idea B for, for its own truth, but then we have to have the truth of B, so then B corresponds to C, and so on, and we have a circular or possibly more of an infinite regress, however you want to do it. That probably is the wrong shape, really. Um, it's the wrong shape that I gave, really, but that's kind of what it mostly is, that if you try to do truth by correspondence, you try to um, pretty much um, have some kind of idea or uh, some kind of idea or relation in correspondence to it, not objects. Um, so that we kind of had this, you know, re this this regression of correspondence. So because of that, because of that, re because of that re re regression of correspondence, Perry says that there is no correspondence with truth. We, we don't talk about truth that way. So, he talks about the sense. Now, the article Zin und Bedeutung, that is sense and sense and reference, or the, uh, the word Zin. Um, truth has to do with the sense of, some, of something. Um, where reference, this is the whole, the other thing is, but is bedeutung or reference? Reference is um, how um, pretty much morning star refers to one thing, evening star refers to another. But there's, or actually, uh, morning star and evening star refer to the same thing. However, their senses are different. Um, now, pretty pretty soon, hopefully today, I'll be able to do a video about Frege's article sense and reference too because that's something I've been trying to trying to get ready to present here um, so we have this let's say I am 24 which I am I am 24 is, is, is the same thing as saying it is true that I am tw that I am 24 so the sense of something corresponds to its truth but Frege does say that truth is difficult to define and almost pretty much indefinable and that's a difficult thing, but truth always comes down to sense. And language is a very complex thing um, to where you know how to how to get how to um, our thoughts um, how to how can we get our thoughts to convey things? How do we how can we make sure that our that that our thoughts are conveying the correct things through 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 through, through, through language, or does language convey thought? convey thought well um, and uh, pretty much um, it all has to do with imperative sentences um, no it was it was de declarative excuse me they're declarative in that they're de declaring something declaring something um, so that's you know it has to do with that it has to do with declaring something um, and uh, there's a lot of talk here, I would say, about as to how, you know, how complex language is and how, you know, how difficult it is to convey the real thought through language. So we have content, assertion, judgment, and thinking. Content is the thought or the sense itself. Um, so thus, content is this. The content is just the thought, the thought itself. 
without the without without the the vertical line. Um, judgment is this, of course, because we have this this vertical line in Frege's conceptual notation. This is a is a judgment. We are saying that A is true. Um, and we are laying the thought out in a judgment as true. Now, assertion is to um, pretty much unfold it or manifest it as, as such. Um, thinking is the apprehension of thought. Now, he's kind of just trying to lay these things out and show how language is very, is very complex. Now, if you ever heard of Frege's third, third realm, um, this is a lot of where that is. Um, we have typically in philosophy we have subjectivity and we have objectivity which where subjectivity is through ideas um, where you know an idea belongs to the, to the, the thinker um, and idealism is the theory that everything we see is a result of is a, is, a, is a result of ourselves or people like people like Berkeley and Schopenhauer and Kant um, they have varying varying theories of idealism but it's about it's saying that the uh, idealism is saying that what you see is a production of, of, of your own of your own mind where object objectivity or mind independence um, is when I see when I see when I see this marker, the 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 uh, metaphysical realists um, pretty much are saying that this is real and objective beyond my own mind, beyond beyond my own being. And there's varying theory, varying theories varying theories of realism with that. Now, does an idea equal a thought? No, according to Frege. An, an idea is subject subjective and ideas have owners that's for sure however a thought doesn't the sense of something is not is not owned now if you if you uh, if you if you go back to Descartes who says the I think the uh, I think therefore I am argument for one's existence he says that we cannot we, we cannot have a thought without a owner, and what I think he means is that we don't have ideas without owners. Now, this whole thing is very, is very, is very, is very convincing, I would say, or Frege's is, um, and uh, pretty much a thought being the sense, of, the sense of, of of something. I don't see how thing, how thought being brought down to the be, to being the sense of a of a sentence or the sense of a of a picture or a sense of a proposition you know we can pretty much break down the sense of really anything and we can kind of see how i mean i don't think that that's possible to be to be um sub to be sub subjective only i don't see how we can have thoughts or sense i don't see a, I don't see how sense can have bears. So, since we have ideas not equaling thoughts, we have the third realm, where we have the real world or the objective world, and then we have the subjective world through through ideas, and then we have the third realm, which is the realm of thought. Um, and ideas do have bears, however, thoughts don't. And you know, and and obviously thoughts can't be a part of the object, a part of the object, objective world alone, because they are a part of us. Of ob, I mean, obviously, and they aren't ideas. Um, they aren't ideas because of how it's it's related to sense. And sense is sense is is obviously not, um, not ideas. Sense is broader than that. It's bigger than it's bigger than bigger than that. Um, so, what is the consequence of this? Frege says that we can't have we can't have solipsism now. Sol solipsism 
is the idea, or, or sometimes called e egoism, that is the idea, or, or sometimes called e egoism, that you can't you, you can't prove the existence of anything other than other than other than yourself. And we can't have solipsism because since we have thoughts, and thoughts are not merely merely sub merely subjective or merely object or merely object objective either, then 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 there must be something that exists besides oneself. Idealism, same same thing. If we have thoughts, then those thoughts mean that there's something outside of us. Thus, we can't have idealism. Same thing for for skepticism. If we have if we have thoughts, if we have thoughts that have sense, in Frege's term, in Frege's, in Frege's terminology, um, then we can't have skepticism, and thus there there is some evidence for things to exist out. Outside of us, so um, how does this relate to language? That's the that's the main question. Now we have kind of um, the main uh, the whole like issue as to how do mind and language relate to each other? Mind, mind and language, um, you know. Um, is language, um, or, or, that's just kind of one big thing that I probably need to, like, research, in, research into more, um, in the, in the philosophy of mind and in the philosophy of language. These two fields, the, the, the philosophy of mind and the philosophy of language are branches in philosophy I'm not too well read in, and I need to, I need to get more read into, but, but, Gallup Frege, I, I am pretty well, well, well read in, um, so I guess this is kind of going to be me kind of branching out into these two, and um, this whole logical inquiry of Frege is talking about how mind and language, it, how they, how do they intersect? That's the big, the big thing here, and he he talks about the 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 complexity of language, and what and what thought is, and that's what sense is. Thought being somewhat reducible to sense brings thought down to on on the on the mind level. So this is a pretty brief way of um, going about this. So if you have a question or if you think I've left something out or messed something up, please please comment below because I'd love to discuss with you. Um, also, if you need help with something or need or want to ask a ask a, ask a question. Definitely comment, comment below because whenever you comment, I get an email. And if your comment is constructive, then I will always respond. So thank you.